You're listening to Ling with the Tuesday Treat Show on award-winning radio Y3D. This is Ling Pang for 103DI and I talked with the legendary singer Rick Shepard who was a former member of the Drifters and the Second Golden Age group. In this interview, Rick Shepard talked about his fascinating music career, past and present. How are you? I'm fine. How are you today? I'm very well. I'm in England and I understand that you are in Toronto, eh? in Canada yes, today. I'm- Toronto today. <laughs> are you are you doing some uh, touring or singing right now? Yeah, so I have my own group, the Drifters featuring Rick Shepard in Canada and the United States. That sounds really wonderful. I'm welcome to my show today. I I can't <laughs> wait to start speaking with you. First of all, Rick, tell me about yourself. Well, I started out singing and performing since I was nine years old. And in my family, we have entertainers and police officers. My cousin was Eartha Kitt. She passed away, of course. And uh, I've been performing, and uh, we have entertainers and police officers. And uh, I had stopped singing for a while, and I became a New York City police officer for a while. So my kids would get a chance to know me because I was singing, uh, doing 40 weeks a year, 41 nighters. And um, uh, I, I discovered that my kids didn't really know me because they didn't really see me that much. So I took time out to give them uh, quality time with me. And I and – I, uh, that was uh, 19, uh, the middle 70s when I decided to do that. And then Butch Leak replaced me in the Drifters at that time. Wasn't I um, right that you replaced the, the lead singer, the legendary singer, Rudy Lewis? Yes, I was uh, there to uh, the Treadwells. George Treadwell hired me to replace Rudy Lewis uh, as a lead singer. I, was, I had records out on my own at the time, and I understood they uh, played a lot of them in England at the time. I didn't know it at that time, but they had played them. Uh, Can We Share It? And I'm Going to Change. Uh, those songs have been played in Northern England. Uh, I understood, but I didn't realize. One day I was uh, at a dance, and a lady from England was at a dance, and she says, Rick Shepard, you've never come to England, and your song is very popular there. I said, no, I don't think so. I said, uh, you know, I'm with the Drifters. She said, no, no, you have. And then she started talking, so I... Uh, got in touch with the record company, and my record was popular. I didn't even know it at that time. So I had never been to England at that time. It was called Northern Soul. Isn't it good to be part of a massive, mega-selling uh, band, that the, the, the Drifters? Because I had the privilege to uh, to interview uh, one of your very best friends, Mr. Butch Leek, in May for uh, on my show. And then right. he explains um, about the histories of the, the Drifters, uh, ups and downs, the 60 years, and so on. And then, um, and then now I get to speak to yourself today, understanding a lot more about the history of the Drifters, as well as the the. Future future uh, that is coming uh, for the Drifters legend and so on. Before I um, go on uh, to that, are you personally very thrilled to be part of, a, of a, such a great band? Yes, I am. I am very thrilled. And Butch is a great guy, by the way, a very nice person. And uh, I'm always impressed with him. He knows all the history. <laughs> He's a historian, isn't he? He's become yeah, a historian. Yeah. And I believe that um, according to the information uh, I got from him, he has written five books. Yes, he has. As well as establishing uh, the Drifters Legends Clubhouse. Yes, and the book has great quality to it, you know. Um, he, did, yeah. he did a great job. He has done a very good job. The thing is, because we, um, I'm a fan, you see, of the Drifters, so you can understand how excited I am now speaking to yourself. (laughs) And I have watched yourself performing on YouTube. I must say, you are a family man as well, aren't you? Yes, thank you. (laughs) And have a wonderful voice. All you guys always look very handsome when you're singing. I would like to say on behalf of the the females uh, fans in UK, and then uh, they they'll be very excited and uh, to hopefully very soon that we can see you guys coming over to England and perform for us because uh, we all remember great bands with these memorable tracks like um, from the 70s onward because I wasn't born in this country you see. so my members oh. tracks were like <laughs> kissing in the back row and you know I come over to my place and, and, and all that these were the really memorable uh, tracks let's uh, look at uh, yourself uh, so you became involved in uh, was it in 1966 1966 yes I uh, my father was a New York City uh, detective and he told me you should always have a backup plan 
And uh, he was always wanted me to join the police department and all this stuff. And then I got a call from George Treadwell. I didn't know George at the time. And I got this call. And uh, this gentleman on the other line said, uh, are you Rick Shepard? I said, yes. He said, how would you like to be the next lead singer of the Drifters? I said, yeah, right. And I hung up the phone because I thought it was somebody playing a game. So uh, this uh, lady I knew, Rose McCoy, who wrote uh, 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 on the B side of Elvis Presley uh, records and things, and uh, she called me back. She said, Rick, did a guy call you up named George Treadwell? I said, yeah, some guy called me up saying he was George Treadwell. I don't even know who George Treadwell was. She said, well, George Treadwell manages the Drifters, Sammy Davis Jr., Nina Simone. I said, oh, yeah? She said, well, don't worry. He'll call you back. <laughs> so the rest is history. He called me back, and uh, I went up to his office, and we had a talk. And uh, uh, after a while, after talking with my attorney and everything, and uh, I signed the contract with the Drifters. So subsequently, you were on the, the, the second golden age then, isn't it, of the Drifters? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, myself and Charlie Thomas were the only two living members of the Drifters of the, uh, that recorded on Atlantic Records in the 60s. We're the only two that's left mm. from that era. Well, on the subject of music, you yourself, Johnny Moore, Charlie Thomas and Bill Frederick recorded Ain't It The Truth?, and that Correct. was uh, in, uh, was it, am I right to say that was it released in May 1967? Do you want to tell me a little bit more about this track? Because I'd like to play that. <laughs> yes, we were both uh, in the studio. I was uh, um, uh, recording with the Drifters at that time. And uh, uh, Johnny Moore and I both did the lead on the track. And um, somehow when Treadwell came into view the track, to listen to the track, my track was missing. So they didn't have time to locate it, so they had to wind up going with Johnny Moore's version. I believe in your heart, you're feeling blue. But you can't understand the things I do. And you think that I found somebody new. Now, ain't it the truth? Oh, ain't it the truth? Well, if I don't kiss you each and every day. And it was good because it wound up being a, a, a strong hit. That went to number 36 on the R&B chart and also was to be the last charting record for Atlantic Records. Uh, yes, but we did quite a few. They played quite a few, but didn't uh, go quite that high at the time. 
That is the, the, the most memorable one. I'm moving on to another one. Do you remember the song called A Rose by Another Name? Yes, we did that record as well. Recorded that as well. And that was led by Johnny Moore, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, on Atlantic Records. In a garden of city streets, I watched her growing there. Pretty of my father and the flowers in her own black hair. And the traffic kind of cools it, and it stops for a while. Just to watch her walk and smile her pretty smile. And I would know her even if I never heard her name. Cause no matter what they Johnny was a great lead singer, very nice and cool. <laughs> Do you know what? I, lo I love his voice as well. All of you got fantastic yeah. voice, but Johnny's voice is absolutely cheerful, isn't he? He was such right. a natural singer. He had a unique voice, yeah. and he could reach the, the high notes with ease. <laughs> <laughs> and that was uh, recorded in uh, 1971? 1971, uh, yes. That was um, uh, another track. I want to listen to it again. Uh, I will play that definitely. And look at another one now. This one is in the 60s uh, called Baby What I Mean.
Yes, baby, what I mean. That was the one that Johnny and I uh, were sharing the lead on that, and they lost my part of the track. A baby, what I mean. And that was the Drifters' last national pop chart. And at number 62 in May 1967. Right. There's a lot of great music being recorded in the 60s, isn't it, during your time with the, the Drifters? Right, because we were traveling so much and we would have time to come in. When we came back into New York City, we had to go straight to the studio. And, and things were moving so fast, we didn't have time to really learn the song. We were reading it off the paper and singing, so you had to have your ability, you know, to really uh, uh, sing right off the spot. You're a natural uh, artist yourself, isn't it? You don't really need to practice that much because you, you are all very talented guys. You know, you probably need to glance through the lyrics and next right, minute it's right. in your head. <laughs> that, I mean, that's why the, one of the qualities of being a professional, well-renowned vocalist uh, yourself, right. you, you have the ability to remember lyrics uh, very quickly. Yes, you have to do that, you know. Uh, and back in those days, you had to... Uh, they didn't have where they could, uh, when they record, they could add stuff to it. You had to get it straight because you had a live band right there playing while you're recording. So if you made one mistake, they would have to stop and start all over again. So, <laughs> how, about, make sure you have it. how about the next one called Still Burning in My Heart of the same year? Johnny went to went to sleep. He said he had to uh, listening to the tape all night long, so it would be in his head on <laughs> the next morning. <laughs> Back to um, the uh, conversation uh, I had with Mr. Butchley, is uh, being the youngest member of the third golden period. He has become a fantastic historian and published books and magazines, and established the Drifters Legends Club, which serves as a platform to inform fans of uh, you know, the development, plans, and likelihood to be performing in the UK, involving members under the brand name of the Drifters Legend. I believe that you are one of the legends, aren't you, Rick? Thank you. I am. I'm proud to be one of the legends. <laughs> and what, what, when was the last time you performed uh, in the UK, Rick? Well, I haven't performed in the UK at all. Um, my uh, uh, tunes, songs have played before I joined the Drifters uh, and after the Drifters in the UK, but I was unaware that it was being played at that time. So it would be a pleasure for me to come to the UK and uh, perform for the people there. You have a lot of loyal fans in the UK still, you know. Every time I say I'm going to be interviewing one of your guys and I get loads of messages, they say they can't wait to, to see your guys performing, hoping in 2018. 
Right. Uh, we have we have such loyal fans all over, even in uh, Japan and Singapore and uh, the islands, uh, the Caribbean, and they seem to just love the drifters. What are your thoughts of the uh, fake drifter bands out there exploiting the name, performing, and benefiting financially when they have never been officially part of the drifters' recording artists on the Atlantic and Bell Arista labels? Yes, um, I had the problem with this uh, gentleman too that uh, Treadwell's later uh, had trouble with him. Uh, his name is Larry Marshak. Mm. He uh, he has 15 groups of drifters right now. Uh, he, um, I went to court with him in the United States at first, and I didn't really know that much about him. So he won the first case uh, because he had Charlie Thomas working with him. And uh, Charlie didn't really understand what type of a guy he was working with. And uh, then he, I told, Johnny Moore and myself told Charlie Thomas, well, once uh, once this guy um, get what he wants from you, he's going to get rid of you. And that's exactly what he did. He fired Charlie. Oh. And Charlie had to get his own group. Now, I own the trademark in Canada to the name The Drifters. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy came up to Canada with his group. And uh, I challenged him, and I took him to court in Canada. And the Treadwells, they had backed me up, um, uh, Mrs. Treadwell at that time. Uh, because he was trying to say that I, I was not a member of The Drifters. I never recorded with The Drifters. And I'm on 16 recordings with The Drifters. And um, and uh, I won the case against in Canada. And he left Canada without paying his attorneys, and he had no assets in Canada, so he went back to the United States. But unbeknowing to him that Canada had a treaty with the United States in the music business, mm -hmm. and I brought the case against him in the United States, and he lost to me. So uh, he owes me about $2.5 million, which he filed bankruptcy. <laughs> uh, and he's still at it. I don't know how he gets away with it. Back at it, he doesn't use his name, but he has his... His group of drifters and platters and coasters, and uh, he's caused a lot of people a lot of trouble. Because uh, Butch League has, uh, has spent uh, so much time, an amazing ability to remember the history and put them into books and magazines, and now you have Drifters Clubhouse. That serves as a platform now to inform people. So the Drifters Legend, under the branding called Drifter Legend, started performing, right. hoping that that will spread to Europe and the rest of the world. And that will actually uh, serve as a purpose to tell the stories uh, to the fans all over the world, what exactly happened behind the scene. Right. It's not just performing, it's also the legacy of the drifters, uh, uh, you know, uh, maintain the legacy. That's what the reason why the books and the reason why you guys um, are planning on coming back under the name the drifters legends, which identify, Correct. which identify yourself being uh, the authentic uh, drifters uh, recording artist. Where the other band that you mentioned earlier, they never recorded under the Atlantic or the or the Arista Bell Records. So that's what identify you and and with those that are not genuine correct because i admired butch he got all of us together all the actual recording members of the drifters together um and this way we can combat uh these situations exactly because i had a guy from england call me one time i didn't know him i think he had managed to treadwell's uh, uh i don't know what uh part he played in it but he called up for to hire me to come to england and um, and uh, at the time, my manager told him, no, Rick is not interested in that. If they're not the real drifters, he's not interested. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I, so I didn't go. Now moving on to some amazing achievements. And tell me about your greatest successes and awards. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I've traveled all over the world and enjoyed uh, working as a member of the drifters. And um, it's just unbelievable how uh, the fans... Uh, treat you and they're happy to see you. And I always say, you know, uh, if it weren't for the fans, there would be no use. So you should always be glad to sign autographs and uh, speak with people because you have a lot of entertainers out there. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to sign autographs. But, you know, you have to remember where you came from, where you started from. Exactly. Because if it weren't for them, there would be no you. Without radio uh, stations, without televisions, you, you'd be singing just to four walls, wouldn't you? 
Correct. With the, the drifters, I find that uh, uh, the first member being、uh, Butch Lee himself, I spoke with. He was such a friendly person and made me feel so at ease. And I've also、um, interviewed with Clyde Brown、yes. uh, recently. Again, such a lovely person. And Joe Blunt, equally friendly. And now you, all of you are very friendly and warm. I would think the British people would be very lucky. Uh, to see you guys coming back, hoping that we don't have to wait too long in the UK、uh, for for the drift, and as well as I can't wait to see what type of new songs that your guys will be bringing out. Right. Well, we're working on it. <laughs> don't give anything away. We're gonna wait. <laughs> we're gonna wait.、Uh, did you also write songs, Rick? I've only written one song, and、uh, I have it on an album, but、uh, we'll see what happens with it.、Um, yeah. But I'm really uh, just the, uh, a lead singer and、uh, participant in the Drifters.、Uh, we had famous writers that had written for the Drifters in the United States, like Carole King, Lieben Stoller. You know,、uh, we had fabulous writers, and that also contributed to the Drifters'、uh, major hits as well. Nice to have great team of artists、uh, writing songs for such a famous band. What songs or new material you'll be bringing? They're going to be delightful、uh, for the fans all over the world to hear that. Just don't want to give too much away right now. <laughs> right. Well, I can't wait to、uh, meet and greet the British uh, uh, people over there in England, and、uh, and for them to get to know me, and I will get to know them, and、uh, the whole group.、Uh, I think they're all a bunch of great guys. Being a artist,、uh, you you know you have to make fans feel at ease, don't you? Because not only、Correct. that, when you guys performing, you all have most beautiful smiles. Well, that's part of Drifters' trademark: styles and choreography. <laughs> I mean, smiles and uh, choreography. Uh, uh, and、uh, you know, you have to remember one thing:、uh, the people came to see you. There's no such thing as the people. Um, the show didn't work good because of the people. Maybe you didn't put on a good show. You have to remember,、yeah. people don't want to know about you had a headache or you didn't get a chance to eat because you were flying. All they want to know is they want to forget their problems, and you make them forget their problems for that hour or two hours that you're performing. And that's your job to make them feel at ease and be happy that they came to see you. An entertainer is always an entertainer. Correct. That's what I think. You've been doing this since the age of nine, so you don't need any practice, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been doing it quite a while. Quite a while. You know what I also find so good is the way you guys dressed in the in those olden days. Everybody in unison, you know, all these beautiful suits and things. I'm just wondering because it's a newer generations here now. We're talking about decades back. We are now in this era. Just wondering whether your your guys' dress style will be different, but we gotta wait and see. You know, we don't want to give anything away. Right. Well, they'll see. <laughs> Before you go, would you like to name one of your most favorite tracks of the Drifters for me to play next? Um, save the last dance for me. That's a beautiful track. I will <laughs> play that one straight afterwards. Thank you for giving your time today. And thank you so much. You have a, a good day. Thank you so much, and you have a pleasant day as well. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You can dance. Every dance with the guy who gives you the eye. Let him hold you tight. You can smile. Every smile for the man who held your hand beneath the pale moonlight. But don't forget who's taking you home and in whose arms you're gonna be. So darling, save the last dance for me. Mmm. Oh, I know、oh, that the music's yes, fine, like sparkling、oh, wine. Go and have your fun. Yes, I know. Laugh and sing, yes, but while we're apart, don't give your yes, heart to anyone. Yes, Cause don't forget who's taking you home and in whose arms you're gonna be. So darling, save the last dance for me.、Mm. Baby, don't you know I love you so? Can't you feel it when we touch? 
I will never, never let you go I love you all so much You can dance, you can dance Go and carry it on dance. Till the night is you gone dance. And it's time you to go can dance. You can dance. If they ask you can dance. If you're all you alone can dance. Can they take you, you home? Dance. You must tell you me no dance. You can But dance. don't forget who's taking you home And in whose arms you're gonna be So darling Say, say the last dance for me. me Baby, don't you know I love you so Can't you feel it when we touch I will never, never let you go I love you all so much But don't forget who's taking you home And in whose arms you're gonna be So darling, sing the 